Buckle your seatbelt as we get to the most dramatic full moon of the year with the full moon in Aquarius on Monday, August 19th. This full moon occurs right in the middle of the two tenths T-squares and it represents the point of explosion and bursting of all the tensions that we're building throughout August. Let's take a closer look and break it down for all 12 signs. My name is Anastasia. I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive readings. If you enjoy my content, please take a few seconds of your time to show your appreciation by leaving a like or a comment, subscribing, pressing that notification bell, watch another one of my videos. Anything helps. It encourages YouTube algorithm to be more friendly, helps bring more views my way. I really appreciate that. Um, you also can say thank you by buying me a tea, a coffee, a croissant, whatever your heart desires. Before we dive in, if you're looking for astrological guidance, you have important questions you'd like me to answer by looking at your chart, giving you a personal reading, you can book one on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. There is a variety of options, a couple of durations and readings that can help you understand your relationship, your natal potential, your year coming up, and more. Um, additionally, on my website, you can find a variety of candles and oils I create. This is my August creation, Sunlight in a Jar 3. This is the candle that started it all. My first ever candle that I made was in August 2021 with Sunlight in a Jar. And this is the third edition. It still smells the same, smells like citrus and it's decorated with golden foil. Gold is the metal connected to the sun. This one captures the sun in rulership on the day of the new moon in Leo. So it has the energy of new beginnings, new beginnings that bring you recognition, visibility, attention for your gifts, talents, and the work that you're doing. So it's great for performing, for professional success, and writing even potentially. Um, I captured this right before Mercury stationed retrograde, so it's still direct in here. And I would highly recommend this for those born with their sun in Libra or Aquarius, which are the signs of fall and detriment for the sun. If your natal sun is in the dark house, 6, 8th or 12th, if it's making difficult aspects like conjunction, square or opposition to Saturn, Pluto or potentially Neptune. Definitely check this out. It's the newest the newest creation. Oh, another thing that happens when I created this candle, the sun was sextiling Jupiter. So it has the lucky benevolent planet of growth and abundance supporting it from the sign of Gemini. So in this video, we're talking about the full moon in Aquarius. This is an intense one. This I when I was making my 2024 planner, I remember flagging it. I think I even made like a video talking about it because the full moon on its own is an opposition between the sun and the moon. So there are a lot of emotions. If you talk to people working at emergency room, they often say that they get more accidents, more people in the waiting room. Um, it's busier, it's crazier, right? At the clubs, there is a lot more fights, etc. Because it's the opposition between our two luminaries. The mom and dad are fighting, right? <laughs> With the sun being the dad, the moon being the mom. This full moon also squares Uranus, which adds an element of unpredictability, surprises, shakeups. And it occurs on the day of Venus square Jupiter opposite Saturn. So we have like you know, benevolent planets are both sort of under pressure because Jupiter is squaring Saturn, Venus is opposing Saturn. And the full moon has itself this like unpredictable energy that will shake you up, potentially bring progress and change, but not going to be the easiest. So let's do the usual rundown. It happens on Monday, August 19th at 2.25 p.m. Eastern. So adjust for your time zone. Um, to see the exact time it's gonna happen in your area. And it occurs at 27 degrees, 14 minutes of Aquarius. So you're likely to feel it the most. You have, if you have planets around 24, 29 degrees fixed signs. And those are of course, Aquarius, Leo, Taurus, and Scorpio. If you have 
your midheaven, your ascendant, your Venus, Pluto, etc., whatever it might be within that orb, it is likely that it's going to affect you more. There is simultaneously a lot of action in the mutable signs. That is where Venus, Jupiter, and Pisces, sorry, Saturn are all meeting. Um, so if you have, like, if it's, if you also have planets in the sort of like from like 15 degrees until like 20, four degrees of mutable signs, which are Pisces, Virgo, Gemini, and Sagittarius, this is going to affect you as well. And, uh, you know, of course it's going to affect everyone, but like some people feel things more strongly than others. We are completing the chapter from February 9th, 2024, when we had the new moon in Aquarius. As always, it is worth taking a look to see what was happening in your life, what kind of events may have been occurring, what kind of projects have you been starting. Um, the square to Uranus is definitely suggesting that there is an element of shakeups and disruptions. Uranus is still in Taurus until next year, so Uranus and Taurus represents our place of living, our finances, our job, our relationships on many levels, things that create that sense of comfort, security, and things that you can rely on. So with the full moon in a square to Uranus and Taurus, there may be shakeups that affect your living situation, that affect your finances. You know, something happens and you suddenly have to move, that affect your... Um, money, values, like relationships, etc. And the full moon in Aquarius is, there's also that opposition between the very personal energy of Leo. We are in Leo season, right? Sorry for the outside noises, but it helps. <laughs> it helps for me to have the window open because then the cool air, it's actually a relatively cool time right now been raining for a couple of days so even though we're in the middle of august it's still pretty pretty cool um so so leo is a deeply personal sign right it's very ego driven we have mercury currently in leo retrograding we just had mercury Cassini. there are like a lot of questions on what i want what makes me me a lot of sort of like me i energy right and that's good but sometimes there could be too much of it so the full moon in Aquarius is saying like how can you create a better balance in your life when things are unstable when things don't go your way potentially when you're dealing with the restrictions when you're dealing with uncertainty who can you trust right like Aquarius is a very friendship oriented sign how can you be more rational too I think like how can you be a little bit detached like a little bit of detachment is never wrong <laughs> i mean it can help right a touch of detachment so it calls you to be rational it calls you to rely on your community i think sometimes it might also encourage you to help the other person versus focusing on yourself and being too caught up in the emotions of it all to stress about you not getting your way because you're quite likely not going to get your way around this time another t-square that is happening around the time of this full moon is venus in virgo right venus and practical humble helpful virgo will oppose saturn and square jupiter and so the square to jupiter from venus is like let's go let's have fun let's do things and then the square to saturn is like not yet, take a step back, make compromises, make sacrifices. So this full moon just has like a lot of this, a lot of this, let's do it, let's reach success, let's approach things with bravado and enthusiasm of like Jupiter and Leo, right? And it's like, nope, not now, sit down, think about other people. So very kind of, I think, it has both the element of heaviness represented by, by Saturn, but at the same time, that like unpredictability of Uranus. So we shall see. <laughs> we shall see how it shows up. I think the main lessons here are definitely that compromise is necessary, that you shouldn't force your hand, that you should take a step back, that like I said, you know, be rational. Um, 
focus on like ask for help if necessary maybe help someone else in your life so you're not as upset and focused on like your own problems and remember to breathe breathing is always important here and uh, as always if you're looking for personal advice you want to know what all of this means for you what act what gets activated in your chart if it's happening next to your personal planets book a reading on my website we can talk about this full moon um the eclipse season coming up and anything else you might be interested in and like i said on my website you can also find all of my candles and oils sunlight in a jar three is the newest edition so let's talk about the full moon through all the zodiac signs starting as always with aries rising i recommend listening to your rising sign more so than your sun sign but you're more than welcome to do sun or moon or whatever you resonate with the most so if you are in Aries rising, the full moon is happening in your 11th house and it's squaring Uranus in the second. So the full moon in the 11th and it squares Uranus in the second suggests that there is a need to adjust your expectations in relationships, in your friendships, in response to something that is maybe happening with your resources maybe you know maybe a friend owes you money and they just sort of don't pay you back and you get frustrated and you get in a fight with a friend and there is a need to uh, like try to think rationally about things try not to like force things the full moon in the 11th might also suggest that you are either completing some kind of projects with friends or you are maybe looking at your dreams a little bit more rationally and once again that square to uranus in the second it's either you are dealing with some kind of financial uh shakeups and maybe money going away money like needing to be spent elsewhere Square to Uranus in the second might also be about realizing that you no longer value the things you used to. Um, some type of like light bulb effect, right? Some type of like important realization, a new money making idea, a new investment, a new opportunity that is once again then goes into your sector of the full moon in the 11th house and affects your relationships with others. Like if you suddenly realize you're into astrology and your friends um, say, you know, sort of mean things when you share your interests, the full moon in the 11th might be the time when you are realizing that your goals are not aligned with your friends and you're needing to set some distance between them. Or, you know, in terms of your dreams, there may be some kind of understanding that your dreams are changing and your desires are changing. At the same time as this full moon occurs, we also have Saturn, the ruler of this full moon in your 12th house in opposition to Venus in the 6th and in a square to Jupiter in the third, which is also very like similar energy, I think, realizing that something needs to change, something needs to transform in terms of your um, mental health, your spirituality, maybe you need to bring more of that into your life, maybe you need to find some kind of better outlet, I think, for your interests. And so needing, yeah, like needing to be once again sort of like rational and needing to look at relationships and friendships from a very like honest perspective a rational perspective is highly likely here if you're looking for more book a reading on my website anastasiadoesastrology.com i'd be happy to take a personal look at your chart and answer any questions you have if you are the lovely taurus rising there's a full moon in your 10th house and a square to uranus in the first I see this as changes to your career, status, reputation, your public life, inspired by your personal need for independence, revolution, innovation, right? The square is Uranus in the first. Uranus has been in your first house ever since 2019. So you would have been feeling that desire to like innovate your life, to break away from restrictions for quite some time at this point. And so this full moon in the 10th house might be a, ch a professional change that is prompted by that sort of inner restlessness and maybe even frustration on some level, right? Like if, if you're feeling like your boss is expecting too much of you, 
um, since crazy deadlines doesn't allow you to do your own thing, then you are more likely to be prompted to be that source of change, right? Take a look at what was happening in your life in February 2024. That is around the time when we had a new moon in your professional sector and it could have been planting seeds of new beginnings. The ruler of this full moon is Saturn in your 11th house, which is also highlighting a sense of responsibility, perhaps a need to do work that serves the collective, perhaps your uh, role as a mentor, as a guide, as someone who impacts the world at large. All the while, there's also that square to Venus in the fifth and um, the sorry, the opposition to Venus in the fifth and square to Jupiter in the second. So you're maybe dealing with a lot of questions around like responsibilities to others versus your personal joy versus your finances and everything you have that is available to you. Maybe, maybe also questioning how supportive other people are of you. So there's a lot of I guess a lot of things, a lot of moving parts that affect your professional life and your public status but like something you know once again like if you're feeling really frustrated and you're feeling somehow restricted and limited maybe there's a way to focus on others and focus on not worrying so much about what other people will think of you but instead thinking about this more as like how can your actions improve the world and help people in it it could be a great time around the full moon to to volunteer, to get involved with some kind of, you know, social organization, to donate some clothes and do things that once again take you out of that personal mindset if you're in it too much. Let me know how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Moving on to the beautiful Gemini rising, the full moon in your ninth house completes the chapter started in February 2024 with a new moon in your ninth house and it squares Uranus in the 12th. So the square to Uranus in the 12th could bring up shakeups and things outside of your control, some type of situation arising, an old wound, a mental health problem, some sort of like a sense maybe of being isolated, being alone in things. And then the full moon in the ninth is suggesting that you are encouraged to rethink your perspective. The full moon in the ninth could be an ideological change. The time when you're realizing that I messed up my neck so I can't turn too much. I, I have been doing this a lot. <laughs> Anyways, but the full moon in the ninth could be, could be the time your beliefs are changing. And maybe they have been changing uh, slowly and surely. Maybe, you know, maybe that Uranus, the square to Uranus and Uranus being in the 12th has made you deal with things outside of your control. And perhaps the full moon in the ninth will encourage you to appreciate how far you've come. It might also encourage you to appreciate um, the beliefs you have that support you, even appreciate yourself or appreciate the relationships that are in your life. The full moon in the ninth can also bring changes around your living situation. Once again, if the square to Uranus in the 12th is some kind of surprise where you have to move, you have to relocate. The ruler is Saturn in the 10th, opposing Venus in the 4th. So there's definitely some pressures around home, family, comfort, security, and your career and your professional aspiration. So I guess with all of this tension happening, right, and perhaps a sense of like obligations being so heavy around work and responsibilities you have to others, the full moon in the ninth is very much an invitation to look at what you're telling yourself, to look at your ideas, but also look at um, your live yeah like your living situation do you need to change something do you need to apply for a visa in order in order to move and find more freedom do you need to take some kind of classes right like the full moon in the ninth could be the time if you've been applying for education maybe you finally start education or maybe you graduate from some kind of course there might also be a legal matter that is finishing up and coming full circle um it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one, especially in context of everything else that is going on with the Sun and Leo in the third, 
you know, Venus in the fourth, Saturn in the 10th, <laughs> Jupiter in your first house. Like one thing is for sure you're going through like an important personal reinvention period. And before you get there, you have to address a lot of tensions and frustrations. And so the full moon in the ninth is maybe even encouraging you to lean into a spiritual practice, to find a group of people that are more aligned with you, to find a belief, a philosophy, an ideology that is more supportive of you. If you're looking for more for a personal reading, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. I'd be happy to analyze your chart, talk about your relationship or your year to come. If you are the lovely Cancer rising, the full moon in the eighth house brings completion to your house of debts, loans, taxes, and also potentially completes a chapter started in February 2024 when we had a new moon in Aquarius. So very simply put, this could be the time you pay off a debt. This could be the time you sign a contract if you've been negotiating for a while or you release a contract. You maybe release a contract or you release some kind of like dependency. Eighth house is the place of um, energetic exchanges we have with other people. So if there is some type of like relationship that has been holding you back. This might be the opportunity to maybe talk about um, talk about things honestly and figure out better dynamics with other people. There's a square to Uranus in the 11th, which could suggest that your dreams are undergoing an important transformation. You're seeking freedom. You're seeking independence. There might be some type of surprise involving your future plans. Like a square to Uranus might be you get a scholarship at a school that is in a different state and now you need to move and you need to figure out how you're going to keep paying your mortgage or how your relationship is going to get affected by that. Um, the ruler is Saturn in the ninth, opposite Venus in the third square, Jupiter in the 12th. So there's a lot of also tough decisions around um, travel, around education, around relocation, your schedule, your desires, your need for escape on some level. So the full moon in the eighth suggests that like as the as things are changing in your life, right, you have to take responsibility for your duties to others. And some of them you need to have, you need to talk about honestly and maybe release while others, you could be in a position to rethink, right? Like maybe it's not about giving up on paying your mortgage, but maybe it's about figuring out some kind of different strategy. And like opportunities to maybe get an inheritance if you've been waiting for it, pay off a debt, um, finish some kind of partnership are also quite likely here. If you're looking for more, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. If you are the lovely Leo rising, for Leo risings, the full moon is happening in the seventh house and it brings completion to your house of relationships, partnerships, contracts, and agreements. A chapter that started in February with the new moon in Aquarius might be coming full circle and wrapping up, right? So this is the house of relationships and it might suggest that your romantic relationship is reaching a turning point. You're maybe ready to move in together. You're maybe ready to uh, start trying for a child. You're maybe ready to get a house together. Um, there might be a sense of you have outgrown your relationship as well. The full moon does square Uranus in the tenth, which could suggest that the changes in relationships are prompted by surprises involving your public life, involving your status, your career, and reputation. Um, so the very easy idea here, the very easy manifestation might be you quit your job and now your relationship changes because you have to rely on your partner temporarily. Or you actually, because the ruler is Saturn in the eighth, you're actually really determined to um, pay off your debts and you want to work extra hard. So you take on a project that will pay you more, but will maybe put you in another state, will make you travel more, will affect your schedule. And then that puts a strain on your relationship. 
very much like sort of questions around money, around values are dominating this full moon. The ruler is Saturn in the eighth, opposite Venus in the second, square Jupiter in the 11th. So all of these questions of like, I value this, you value that, can we make it work? Or if not, do we need to separate? And relationships, you know, seventh house is the place of romantic relationships, but it could also be about a friendship or a business partnership, some other kind of significant, you know, like I've seen this manifest like a friend of mine who is single with a child for her when the full moon was happening in her seventh house, it was about her and her nanny telling her that the nanny, like that she's moving on to a, a different job. And so like, don't look at it purely from the perspective of like a romantic relationship. It is of course likely, but it can also be about your friendship changing in response to these new professional opportunities or changing values, shifting values, sort of more seriousness that you're experiencing. Saturn in the eighth might also be about you feeling like you have to take ownership of your traumas and you have to heal. And so the ripple effect in relationships might be quite strong too, because you're realizing that, um, something needs to change as you're changing in your relationship as well. Let me know how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. For the beautiful Virgo rising, there's a full moon in the sixth house. And this is the change in your health, in your diet, in your exercise routine, in your everyday life that is prompted by some kind of transformation in the sector of education, travel, legal matters, writing and publishing, right? There's a square to Uranus in the ninth, which represents a shift of perspective. So it could be like an internal change, the square to Uranus, you watch a documentary about the food industry and you decide to become a vegetarian. Or you realize how unhealthy your relationship with your colleague is and you talk to them but it feels uncomfortable it feels like you're engaging into some kind of you know major debate uh, but in the long run it's actually gonna bring more peace and kind of understanding into your life uh, the full moon in the six might also represent completion of a project it might represent changes to your schedule in response to your life filling up with opportunities to travel, to teach, to guide others. Um, there is definitely some type of crisis, some type of problem that is indicated by this full moon. It is full of T-squares. The ruler is Saturn in the house of partnerships in opposition to Venus in your first house. I wonder too if like a big question here is whether you will let yourself follow your dreams or whether you will get too caught up in the duties you have to people in your life because Saturn in the seventh very much suggests that there is like heaviness around responsibilities you have to others there may be even some type of like relationship dynamics that you are addressing with the ruler being saturn in the seventh and relationships being you know romantic but also maybe professional relationships that are on the line that are that need to be transformed somehow the square to Uranus in the ninth is interesting. It can also really be like some type of legal um, issue, some type of like challenge, something that affects your everyday life, I think. Like, you know, like Uranus in the ninth could be you find out that you have to, in order to graduate, you have to like, you need one credit. And now you need to figure out how to get that one credit, how to... Uh, you know, take one class and how to deal with this um, and not let it maybe mess with your life too much. Let me know how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. If you are the lovely Libra rising, the full moon in your fifth house completes a chapter started in February 2024 with a new moon in Aquarius in your fifth house and brings changes around romance, pleasure, children, self-expression, completing a creative project, letting go of a creative project, examining a relationship for whether it's long lasting and has potential. Sorry, I'm like 
um, trying to figure out if my microphone is doing okay. I hope I didn't create a lot of static noise. Um, so yeah, like like changes in relationships, changes around parenthood, changes around self-expression and pleasure are likely. There is a square to Uranus in the eighth house, which might represent a surprising resource coming into your life or a financial transformation that is happening. The square is Uranus and the eighth might also suggest that you suddenly have to spend on something or there is some kind of change in the partner's life. Um, maybe a partner is struggling or, you know, like they have recently lost their job. And so your relationship, your romantic relationship needs to transform. Uranus in the eighth, honestly, can also be just some kind of like important revelation about um about your relationship about values and disagreements you have with your partner like your your views on parenthood your views on love your views on sex your views on pleasure will all be up in the air right and the, the full moon in the fifth it can also be a creative partner maybe there is um a creative disagreement that you need to address the ruler is Saturn in the 6th house in opposition to Venus in the 12th and a square to Jupiter in the 9th. So there is also a sense of like kind of heaviness and overwhelm and maybe busyness. And I wonder, I wonder with the full moon in the 5th if you're just also feeling like there hasn't been enough pleasure and enough joy and there's just been like work, work, work. And even with Venus in the 12th, your desire to escape and relax is opposed by Saturn, right? Like, so, so there is not a ton of pleasure. There's not a ton of joy. So with the full moon in the fifth, I think it's almost like telling you that, hey, you need to relax. You need to, you need to listen to yourself. You need to sort of detach from everything else that is going on and perhaps give yourself an opportunity to have fun. Let me know how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. For the beautiful Scorpio rising, the full moon in the fourth brings attention to your house of home, family, and living situation. It suggests changes, completion of a project that may have started in February 2024 when we had the new moon in Aquarius. There may be a move that is happening, a family member moving in with you, you moving out of the family house, you moving in with your significant other. There is a square to Uranus in the seventh house, which represents a sense of shakeups and surprises involving relationships, maybe sudden developments, like a partner needs to move out and you have to move in together. A partner uh, gets a job opportunity that takes them out of state and now you're traveling with them. Some type of like like tension also, I think, between your relationship and your family dynamics, which could be maybe there's also like a realization that the partner um, spends too much time with the family and you need to talk to them about it. But, you know, like full moon in the fourth also deals with your sense of comfort and security. And so if you're feeling like partner being a roommate, a neighbor, um, a sibling who's been crashing with you is creating a sense of discord internally or you've been too focused on trying to maintain harmony with them and not giving yourself a chance to rest. This full moon can also, can also be about like having honest conversations, trying to figure out how you can have more pleasure, more balance, more joy in your life, you know, kind of make your home a safe place for yourself. Simultaneously with the full moon in a square to Uranus, we have Venus in your 11th house opposing Saturn in the fifth. So there's also some kind of heavy topics around, um, around your social engagements and your duties to your romantic partner or your duty to your creative um, project or your child even potentially. So once again, the question with the full moon is like, there's a lot going on. Things are maybe not going immediately the way you'd like them to. But what needs to be done in order to feel sort of more at ease? 
what do you need to do to feel sort of more comfortable and take care of your inner sanctuary and that might also be about taking care of your body taking care of your mind um, nurturing yourself through a variety of practices if you're looking for more book a reading on my website anastasia.astrology.com i'd be happy to look at your natal chart talk about your relationship or your year to come solar return is a great reading to book right around your birthday to find out what's was what's going to be happening next year if you are the lovely sagittarius rising this full moon highlights your third house of communication writing siblings neighbors your everyday life your uh stomping ground right your scheduling and your sort of workload or sort of your everyday load not even like workload necessarily and and it brings change to those routine it says that something needs to be released something needs to be transformed something maybe needs to be completed we are finishing a chapter started in february 2024 so take a look back if you have started a writing project if you have started a communication project if you've invested into a partnership with a sibling or you maybe changed your car, changed your routine, somehow this full moon will very much complete that change, right? It maybe will make you feel like you have fu like fully settled in or something is not working and you need to adjust. There's a square to Uranus in the six, and the square to Uranus in the six could bring a surprise around health, your health you get sick or a family member gets you know maybe a cold or something and you realize that you are very much struggling balancing everything the ruler is saturn in the fourth in opposition to venus in the tenth so once again questions of like professional goals and family are very much highlighted there is tension there is like an issue with balancing everything maybe like a lot going on and so Uranus in the six can also be like a professional problem, something happening with your pet, something happening with your diet, with your doctor's appointment or your like your supply of food coming in, some type of disruption to the way you like to do things. And the full moon in the third will be an opportunity to examine what is worth keeping and what needs to be changed in your life how can you have a better flow maybe even a chance to talk honestly about something if you feel like there's a lot going on and your duties just keep piling up and increasing the full moon in the third will be your opportunity to talk it out to change your schedule to you know maybe let go of some responsibility in order to have more peace internally please share how it resonates and as always if you're looking for more book a reading on my website anastasiadoesastrology.com if you are the lovely capricorn rising the full moon is happening in your second house which is the place of money and values and it completes the chapter started in february 2024 when we had a new moon in aquarius so if you started saving for something at the time of the new moon, the full moon might be about finally spending the money. If you tried, if you started trying to pay off a debt, the full moon could be about paying off a debt. The full moon might also suggest that your values are changing and transforming and maybe your desires and your pursuits are no longer the same. There's a square to Uranus in your fifth house, which brings surprises freedom issues lifts up freedom issues brings a desire for more independence and um, satisfaction involving pleasure involving children involving romance right and so the full moon in the second might be reflective of that right like the square to uranus in the fifth there is a creative project you get excited about square to uranus in the fifth there is a pregnancy that comes suddenly in your life something you didn't expect um there is maybe a new passion project that you have or a new approach to relationships you're exploring and so the full moon in the second is i think an opportunity to 
rearrange your resources in response to those changes that are happening in your love life and your paternal parental parental life um and maybe you know transform things needing to adjust your finances also needing to maybe close some accounts consult some financial advisors the ruler is saturn in your third and it opposes venus in the ninth so the changes you're going through may be connected to like struggling to balance your educational pursuits your writing pursuits your travel pursuits with the responsibilities of your everyday life so once again like you know second house is very much about money but it's also about communicating your values honestly figuring out what about what matters to you and how can you um how can you like sort of have a better flow between what you're trying to accomplish and what's available let me know how this resonates and if you're looking for more book reading on my website anastasiadoesastrology.com if you are an aquarius rising there is a full moon in your first house this is about personal change it's a completion of a personal chapter that got started in february 2024 when we had a new moon in aquarius the new moon could have been about a personal reinvention a change of style a new workout routine, a new diet you have started. And the full moon is a culmination of that, right? Like you started, you went on a workout sort of like heavy protocol, um, started exercising in February. Now you see the results or you started figuring out how to start a business. Now you actually do it or you have gotten the procedure and now you feel like it's all like settled and you're happy with it. The full moon in the first is also, I think, about your personal identity and what is important to you because the full moon squares Uranus in the fourth house. So there might be opportunities to stand up for yourself, to express yourself, to uh, speak up for what truly matters in response to some kind of shakeup in your home, in the family and in your living situation maybe the living situation has felt a little bit chaotic there maybe you've had family members staying with you or friends crashing on your couch and so the full moon in the first might be an invitation to like speak up um it can also be it can also be the time you take like a more responsible role somehow and maybe change your living situation a responsible role could be becoming like a leader in your family or becoming a leader in your household hold and then the square is uranus and the fourth if there is some kind of discomfort in where you live right now the full moon in the first will encourage you to uh, make changes to have kind of more comfort and like to be the hero to be more proactive i also see this as like you know it's it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be deeply personal it could it could also be about making changes in your community making changes in your neighborhood and once again it feels like you are the one who has to be that sort of source of change with the full moon in your first house the ruler is saturn in the second which definitely brings up questions of money values resources that you have available and the changes you need to make in order to uh, adjust to the life that you're living right um the saturn being the ruler is in opposition to venus in the eighth house in a square to jupiter in the fifth house so you're very much trying to balance what you value, what other people value, what you find joy in. And so it's it's like a very complicated full moon because of all of these like tense energies. But it's it's suggesting that you cannot take action without first understanding what is driving you, what is inspiring you, what is lighting your fire. And you need to take care of yourself first as well before you bring light from God's down to earth and help the human race please share how this resonates have you been feeling the frustration of this full moon already and if you're looking for more book a reading on my website anastasiadoesastrology.com if you are the beautiful pisces rising there's a full moon in your 12th house it completes the chapter started in february 2024 with a new moon 
in your 12th house. And the full moon squares Uranus as well. So, so it's interesting because the full moons in the 12th house, they shine light on your subconscious and things that are normally hidden, things that are in your blind spot, right? They're like right there, but you can't see them because they're too close. I don't, I'm not, I don't drive, but I know like when you drive, you have like a blind spot in a car. So the full moon in the 12th can illuminate what needs to transform in your life and it can come out of a conversation or a challenging event event involving a sibling a neighbor um some type of conversation that affects your mindset right maybe even uranus in the third house like a sense of stress in your everyday life a sense of anxiety a sense of some kind of like discomfort the ruler is saturn in your first so it's also very much about you um, Venus is in the seventh, opposite Saturn in the first. There's a square to Jupiter from both planets in the fourth. So I think I think there's a lot going on with this full moon. There are tensions between your need to take care of yourself and maybe your partner going through something, maybe some family dynamics that you're also navigating. Um, maybe some neighbors that are messing with you. So the full moon in the twelfth could be deeply cathartic but it feels very frustrating. It feels like there is some kind of disagreement, misunderstanding, some type of like conflict that maybe inspires you to take better care of yourself. Like you get in a fight with someone in a line at the grocery store and later you realize that it's not about this person, that it's actually about something that you're dealing with. And you know, they're just like a placeholder for that. So the full moon in the 12th could be an opportunity to uh, bring therapy into the mix it could actually bring breakthroughs in therapy it could be an opportunity to change your routines around sleep your routines around uh, mental health your meditation protocols to start meditating to to lean into astrology to do yoga to sort of ask spiritual practices for help and maybe even connect with people who are a lot more spiritual Please share how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now. I hope you're enjoying August and these complicated energies are not bringing you down. I feel like, I feel like there's a lot coming. <laughs> if you haven't seen my video about Jupiter squaring Saturn, that's also like a big signature of this full moon. Definitely check it out. And I will talk to you very, very soon. Bye.